Hello and welcome to today's edition of Read Tech Insights. Uh, today we're taking a deep dive into combination products. Um, and this is particularly for US FDA. This is something we get a lot of questions about. Um, what constitutes the need for UDI when a product has multiple components and involves some type of biologic or drug? Um, so we're talking today with uh, Gary Sainer, our um, UDI expert here at Read Tech. Uh, I'm asking Gary if he could walk us through the highlights to define what is uh, referred to as a combination product, help us understand how that breaks down and, and what you should uh, know about combination products. Yes, thank you, Angela. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the details uh, on combination products. And once we understand some definitions and categories that the FDA has established, that'll provide a good background for us to talk about how the regulations apply for the device constituent inside that combination product. So first of all, let's go back to some of the definition uh, that the FDA uh, provides for us. Um, drug device combination, biologic device combination, drug biologic combination, or you might have all three, drug device and a biologic. So in all those cases, you have two or more regulated uh, medical components combined in, in various fashions. And the, the particular uh, way in which they are combined would establish a particular category that that combination product falls into. So one of the things that we'll be looking at later is a chart where uh, this particular uh, category that you fall into comes into play. Take a look at those. Uh, the first one being the single entity. And here the components are physically and chemically uh, combined uh, to, to produce a single product. The second category would be co-packaged. Now, in this case, the products, the, the, the uh, constituents of that combination product are packaged um, uh, together in, in, inside one particular unit, but the, the products are delivered in, uh, um, as independent uh, items. So you could actually identify the, the device component and the, and the drug component inside a single package. And the third particular category is cross-labeled very similar to the co-package, but now the individual components are packaged separately. So in this particular case, they are labeled to be used one with the other, and that is the linking, if you will, the combining of these particular products uh, by way of the fact that they are labeled to be used together. The instruction for use will have instructions about how uh, you, you combine these two um, components uh, together to administer the, uh, the product to, to the patient. So those are the three different uh, types of product categories. Yeah, and so I, it's obviously packaging and intended use are the, the weighting drivers here as to how you fall into each category. Yeah, that's crucial, Angela. The, uh, the single entity uh, will, will all be uh, <laughs> in a single package, obviously, but more importantly, there'll be a single item the other two, you have independent items and the packaging comes into play, whether they're packaged together or are they packaged uh, separately. And, and uh, I think this will flesh out a little bit better when we take a look at some examples of each of these product categories. For the single entity, again, this is where you have multiple components that are combined um, together. So a very common example is a drug diluting stent. So the, the, you have a, a stent, which is a device, uh, drug uh, coated onto that particular stent. So now you have both of those. Uh, another very common example is a transdermal patch. So the drug is in, impregnated into that patch and, and um, the patch being the delivery mechanism to uh, administer the drug to the body. There's a number of other examples. Uh, very common is pre-filled drug delivery system. So a syringe, insulin uh, insulin injector pen or dose inhaler. Uh, you might have a biologic and, and drug combined together. Let's move over to a co-packaged uh, set of examples. Okay. So now let's take a look at a co-packaged example. In this particular case, we have multiple products, the uh, device and a drug that are packaged together, but you can identify the individual components. For a common example might be a drug and a delivery device. So you might have an inhaler uh, or 
and you you put that particular uh, capsule in the inhaler, assemble it together, and then you uh, apply the, uh, the the drug to the patient. Another common example is a, a drug vial with an empty syringe. Again, you, you combine those two together and, and apply the drug uh, to the uh, patient. Surgical trays uh, with uh, drug components would be another example of co-package. And obviously, the, the real common example here is the, a first aid kit where you have uh, devices such as bandages and drugs like uh, antibiotic uh, ointment. The third category that we'll take a look at is this cross-labeled scenario. And here, uh, the example that we have in front of us is a drug and a device, but they are actually packaged separately. And you'll find a drug, um, in this case, maybe some kind of a photosensitizing drug, and the light source might be a, a, some activating laser or, that would be used in uh, combination with that drug to produce the intended use. Um, but the labeling is very important here. The individual components must be used with the other uh, to uh, achieve the intended uh, use and, and uh, effect that is desired. Okay, great. And I'm hoping you're going to tell us about the uh, items that would not be considered a combination product. Oh, good. Yep. This is uh, uh, just as important to understand what is a combination product as it's good to understand what is not a combination product. If you have different products that are inside the same product type, so all medical devices. Now, this might be the example of our convenience kit that we had or, or the uh, com combination kit that we had earlier that had devices and drugs in it. But now, let's say the drugs were not present and these are all devices. So this would be a device convenience kit. And you can have uh, drug kits as well. Uh, the last example that we have here is where a medical device or excuse me, a medical product is combined with a non-medical product. So you might have a drug in our example, along with a dietary supplement, a, a cosmetic, or even a food. Now these um, uh, items, the supplements, cosmetics, and foods are um, regulated by the FDA, but they're not necessarily approved by the FDA. So they would, uh, are not part of the definition of the combination product uh, itself. So let's uh, now move into how these particular combination products are um, how they particular combination products have UDI uh, requirements that they must meet. And to understand that, uh, this particular chart, uh, we'll go through that. I understand it's a little busy, but there's a couple key items that you need to know when you, you come into this chart to figure out the UDI uh, responsibilities. The first particular column there is the primary mode of action. So the FDA defines that as the single mode of action of a combination product that provides the most important therapeutic action of a combination products. So once you determine that, uh, you'll, you'll either have the combination product um, put into the device category, or it might go over into a drug or biologic category. And the respective centers would then be, take the lead in reviewing your combination products and, and applying regulations. So the Center for Device Radiological Health would be um, the center taking the lead for uh, those that have a PMO, PMOA of a, a device. And CDR and, and CBER would be used um, for those that have drug and biologics as the uh, primary mode of action. So it, it looks like the weighting, it's driven by the primary registration type for the product. Um, so you really have to think about the delivery method and what's the most important um, aspect there. Yeah, and, and I'm just going to back up a second here, Angela, um, because this is very important. It's the first uh, uh, criteria that you need to know when you enter into this, this table. So I'm going to take a look, a uh, more detailed look at the um, the drug diluting stent that we talked about earlier. So a drug diluting stent uh, has a device, uh, the stent itself, and that might be the primary mode of action is to keep the the blood vessel open and you know physically open, and and that would be an instrument, um, and and that's the primary mode of action. The fact that there's a drug there to help you know thin the thin the blood over the course of time, um, it might be considered a secondary. 
and, and therefore the primary mode of action of that drug diluting stent may in fact be uh, a device. On the other hand, perhaps the transdermal patch, uh, most important there, the most important therapeutic effect would be delivering a drug in, into the body. Uh, the fact that it's delivered by way of a patch on the skin is, is secondary. So the transdermal patch may in fact have a PMOA of, of a drug. So it, it, it's not always real clear, <laughs> but that is what you need to know uh, in, in establishing um, what your particular drug or, or your combination product uh, PMOA is when you enter this particular uh, chart and figure out UDI responsibilities. Now, it, it can be very confusing, and there, there's a slide in, in our reference uh, area here that uh, you can follow the links and, and get some further guidance. We'll talk about that in a second. So that is your first uh, entry into this uh, particular chart, uh, PMOA. Once you determine that, then uh, you'll need to identify the particular category. And this is what we talked about earlier. How is your combination product uh, actually combined? How is it assembled? Is it single entity, co-packaged, or cross-labeled? And the third column there is how is that assembly, the top level assembly, identified? The next column is how the responsibilities of the device constituent, whether it needs UDI or not. And then over in the right hand side are, are some uh, Code of Federal Regulation uh, references. You can follow the links there and find information about uh, the particular uh, actual coding and the wording for uh, the date requirements and also uh, UDI requirements. So the very first data row, uh, we kind of alluded to this earlier, let's say your combination product has a PMOA of a, of a device and all of those categories, no matter which one of the three, if, well, most likely UDI would be required to identify the, the combination product, the high level. And if that's the case, then the device constituent inside that combination product does not have to have uh, UDI. So that's pretty straightforward. The second scenario is a little bit more complex in that if your PMOA is for a drug and now your category, uh, you're combined by way of a single entity, most likely the fact that this is a drug PMOA, you'll have a uh, national drug code, NDC number to identify the, the top level assembly. And for the single entity category, um, the device constituent is exempt from UDI, so there's no UDI requirements at all. For the other two categories, co-packaged and cross-labeled, uh, again, NDC is used at the top level, but now the device constituent does in fact have UDI responsibility. So um, the labeling, the reporting uh, procedures and, and so on, um, all those things about UDI would, would apply. All right, so that is a very critical chart. Once you understand the PMOA and what category, you'll be able to uh, uh, quickly identify whether UDI is required for the device constituent. As to the timing, when the UDI uh, compliance must be in place, uh, class three devices, class two devices are um, past due <laughs> going back to 2014 and 2016 timeframes. Class one, if your device constituent in that combination product is a class one, you'll have one to 2022 um, September timeframe to, to uh, have UDI compliance. Now, if your device has, if your combination product has multiple devices, you always follow the highest risk uh, class to uh, determine your, your timeline. Uh, set of resources that I want to identify is sometimes it's a little difficult to, to identify whether your product is a device or a drug um, provided this definition. You can follow this and um, look at your leisure afterwards and, and also in parallel is a definition of a drug. This particular slide provided a number of resources um, provided by the Office of Combination Products. And that particular office um, has a number of websites providing information about combination products, uh, a lot of good reference material there. One of the things uh, that you can do to help identify your primary mode of action and understand which particular center is going to be responsible for the review and regulation, uh, you can follow some of these links here. There is a, 
uh, Code of Federal Regulation link. There's a guidance for industry. And you all are also able to submit an informal request for a designation uh, and also a, a similar request, but now a formal version. So uh, you can uh, send these two uh, requests in, uh, one or both, and receive information about how your product is, is designated. Um, those particular links give you instruction on how to fill out the form and so on. Okay, Other great. information is from Retech. Can you help yeah, us out there, you. Angela? This was a really thorough walkthrough um, on combination products. Uh, thank you for defining and um, showing um, those designations. For UDI compliance questions, please get in touch with meddevice at retech.com. We'd be happy to help you answer any questions um, and set a strategy. Thank you.